It's hard to imagine what could have happened here. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was playing it. Valheim was the talk of the town, no matter where you looked. But how do we get from this at the beginning of March and end up with a situation like this at the beginning of April on Twitch? What does it say about this game that so many are still playing it and yet so few want to watch? Well, in my opinion, it would be easier to show you. There's two ways to think of something that is hard or difficult. It is either challenging, which has a sense of rewarding feelings associated with it, or frustrating, where you feel like you've wasted your time, or you feel like you're in a meaningless task that isn't making you happy. If you were to put these two concepts on a scale, I think that you would find Valheim clocks in at a, let's say, four to one ratio of frustrating and challenging. The game is fun, I've, I've played a bit of it, but the fun parts of it make up a very small percentage of my actual game time. Going back and looking through my recordings, I discovered that most of my game time was spent gathering resources. Now, this isn't a problem in and of itself, but when you consider that I had to look very long and really micromanage my clips to find the exciting segments to use in the montage earlier in the video. What I think has happened with a lot of people is they've realized that the game at the beginning feels more complete than it is. And to be fair, this is an early access title. You begin to really notice this as you progress in the current game content. If you look at the mountains in particular, that area was where I felt like I was having the most the, frustration. The fair and probably best way I can put it this game didn't feel like an early access game until I got to the mountain. Now, when I say that you start to notice that the game is, is in an unfinished state, everything starts to feel very one note. Your game loop as it stands is very similar with every step of the way. You enter a new area, there is a resource you need to find there, you gather an obscene amount of that resource to gear up for a fight, and then you fight a boss. Now, the idea of things being one note showcases itself the most in terms of the mobs in each biome. The base level enemies that you end up fighting throughout this game, in all of the biomes except one, pretty much have the exact same animation, hitbox, and timing to deal with them, as I've evidenced here. Now, I've mentioned that the early game feels different than the late game, and a lot of the things that didn't bother me when I was about halfway through the game really started to grate on me as I progressed through the story. One of the biggest things on this is resource gathering. Going out and chopping down a forest, tons of fun the first couple of times you do it. Going and mining an entire copper node, not the most fun, but at least interesting and new the first time you do it. As soon as you hit your thousandth tree or your tenth copper node that you need to get, things start to wear down to a large degree. And I don't even want to think about how many sunken crypts I must have gone through, considering I gave up at the point that I had to go back to them to do more at the end game when I should have unlocked new content. This ended up being one of the breaking points for me. I had finished four of the five bosses, 
I had soloed the entire game and I was gearing up to do the final boss and was certain that I was dedicating myself to completing this game fully for this review. So towards the end of the game, in order to refine the final level of metal for the weapons, not for the armor, you have to go and mine some iron so that you can build the furnace that refines that material. You also, for the endgame armor, have to go get iron in order to craft it by using a refined material from the final biome planes and iron from two biomes previously that you thought you were done with. I also realized that my food stores had gotten low and that my farm needed to be set up. So I found myself in a situation where every single decision I wanted to make to continue playing the game was dependent on me taking a 15 to 45 minute stretch of meaningless grunt work that I had advanced beyond at this point in the game, not to get it done, but to be in a position to start getting it done. It was, it was just, I had no desire anymore. It had robbed me of my will to persevere in the game. And this comes down to why I think we are in the position that we are with the game currently having more active users than Cyberpunk 2077, the most overhyped game of all time, and having a really interestingly low amount of viewers on Twitch. This game is fun for a decent amount of people to play, but it is not fun to watch at all. We all know there are games out there that are built on the idea of brain-dead, mindless repetition, click the button, receive reward. Look at any mobile game or World of Warcraft. Valheim was big enough that I believe it has the opportunity to come back once it gets out of early access. I know that I personally will be coming back to the game upon the 1.0 release, but I absolutely am not going back to the game until that point. If you look at the roadmap for what they have planned, I'm a little disheartened to discover that the first thing on the agenda is base building, which I would consider to be among the more thought out and robust things of the game right now. I would love to see more emphasis on improving sailing as the first priority, diversifying enemies, doing all those things. Those are on the roadmap for their planned updates in the coming year. We'll just have to see if they actually deliver on anything that's gonna make the game better.